Welcome to Electron Line. To get a better understanding of how friction works on an inclined plane, we're going to have a non static example. What we're seeing here is that the net forces along the inclined plane are not going to equal zero, therefore, there's going to be an acceleration. We're not going to worry about the acceleration, but we do want to find all the various forces the normal force, the friction force, the resultant force. We want to find the various angles, and yes, we want to find the net force along the incline. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we realize that we have a load, not really a load, we have the weight of the object on the incline, and we drew it up on top. This is simply the weight, or mg, equal to 100 newtons coming straight down. Then we have a force pushing the block up the incline, but it's not parallel to the incline, it's simply parallel to the horizontal, it's 20 newton force. Then we realize there's going to be a normal force, and let me draw the N over on this side, so there's going to be a normal force, which is always perpendicular to the surface, and then we're going to have a resultant force, which is a combination or a sum of the normal force and the friction force. By definition, the friction force is always going to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient. In this case, it's going to be the static coefficient of friction because it's going to be moving. So how do we find the normal force? The normal force is a reactionary force that pushes back. It's going to push against the perpendicular component of the weight, and it's going to also push against the perpendicular component of the force applied to the block. Notice we're going to have a perpendicular component to the weight, and we're going to have a parallel component to the weight. So when we then find the normal force, the normal force is going to be equal to the reactionary force to the perpendicular component of the weight, which is the weight times the cosine of theta. In this case, theta is going to be 30 degrees. That's the angle of the incline. And then we have to add to that the perpendicular component of the applied force, which is going to be F times the sine of theta. That will be the normal force. Now, since we know the weight and we know the force and we know the angle we might as well just calculate the normal force so this is going to be equal to the weight which is 100 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the applied force 20 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees now that's 0 0.866 so that would be 86.6 newtons plus a half times this is 10 newtons so that would be a total of 96.6 newtons is the normal force, the reactionary force of the incline back up against the block. From that, we should be able to find the friction force. The friction force is going to be equal to, and again, we're going to assume that the net force is going to be down the incline, which means the friction force will be acting in the opposite direction of the incline, and the friction force is going to be equal to the normal force, times the coefficient of friction, in this case the kinetic coefficient of friction, so it'll be 96.6 newtons times 0 0.2, and let's see here, 96.6 times 0.2, we get 193.2 newtons, 193.2 newtons, and so that's going to be the friction force, Oop, I'm missing a decimal place, how about 19.32 newtons, that's better. All right, what about the force acting down the incline? That's going to be the horizontal component of the weight, so the weight times the sine of theta, which is going to be the parallel component of the weight, which is equal to 100 newtons, times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0.5, so that's a force of 50 newtons trying to push the block down the incline. Now we're going to also find the parallel component to the incline of the applied force. So that would be the F times the cosine of theta, which is 20 newtons, times the cosine of 30 degrees, that would be 0.866, that would be... Uh, times 20,866, that would be 17.32 newtons. And now we can calculate the net force. We have the friction force acting upward, we have the parallel component of the force pushing upward, and we have the parallel component of the weight acting downward, which means that the net force 
is going to be equal to the Pell component acting downward, which is 50 newtons, that would be in this direction, minus the friction force, which is 19.3 newtons, we'll just keep one decimal place, and minus the force pushing against the block acting upward, the component acting upward, which is minus 17.3 newtons. So the net force is going to be 50 minus 19.3 minus 17.3 equals, ha, that's going to be 13.4 newtons acting down the incline. And so therefore, we are going to have an acceleration down the incline because there is indeed a net force here. What about the angles? We have a reactionary force this way which is going to be a sum of the normal force and the friction force. So let's take this triangle right here and redraw that. So we have the friction force, we have the normal force, so there's my normal force, and then we have the, what we call the reactionary force or the resultant force of those two. We know the friction force is equal to 19.32 newtons, and we knew that the normal force is equal to 96.6 newtons. So the normal force equals 96.6 newtons. And let's say we want to find this angle right here, which we typically label phi. Well, we can do that by realizing that this will always be perpendicular. We know that this is perpendicular to the incline, and the friction force is parallel to the incline, so this is a 90 degree angle, which allows us to use the tangent, because we know the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. So we can say that phi is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is the friction force, 19.32 newtons, divided by the adjacent side, which is the normal force, 96.6 newtons. And that gives us an angle, let's see here, that's 19.32 divided by 96.6, and take the arc tangent of that, that would be 11.31 degrees. So that's the angle between the normal force and the resultant or the reactionary force, which is a sum, a vector sum of the normal force and the friction force. Finally, we want to find the angle between the, the vertical and the reactionary force, the angle right here. And we call that alpha. And alpha will be equal to the angle of the incline, which is theta, in this case, minus phi. Now sometimes the, re the resultant force is acting in a direction like this and we add the two angles. In this case it's somewhere in between, so we subtract the two angles. That means the angle alpha is going to be equal to 30 degrees minus 11.3 degrees, I'll just keep one decimal place, which means that this is equal to 18.7 degrees, and that would be angle between the resultant and the vertical. So that's everything you need to know about the situation like this where you don't have a static situation. We have something, there's a net force. You calculate the normal force, the reactionary force, the angles. We need to find the net force, which means you need to add this force right here, plus the parallel component of the weight and the friction force. Add those three forces together to get the net force. And that's how it's done.